More than a third of Americans say that they value financial compatibility with a romantic partner more than physical or intellectual compatibility. And that percentage actually ends up rising significantly among younger generations who are basically earlier on in their relationships and their careers. So let's talk about what this all means and the results of this survey. So Northwestern Mutual's 2023 planning and progress study, which surveyed more than 2,700 people found the following. So nearly half, 49% of Gen Zers, view financial compatibility as more important than physical compatibility. And that's compared to 40% of millennials, 35% of Gen Xers, and 30% of baby boomers. Now look, this does make some sense because if you're a baby boomer, chances are that you're already independently financially stable. You don't have to rely on the financial stability of someone else that you're entering a relationship with um, to have a happy relationship and a happy life. Uh, for Gen Zers, there's a lot more on the line, right? And I do think it is important to have those uncomfortable conversations with your partner early on to kind of figure out. You know, whether you are compatible when it comes to spending habits, saving, budgeting, all of that. I think a lot of people, at least in my generation, I noticed would enter relationships being too afraid to ask those questions. And then they would find out later when it was too late that they entered a marriage with someone who's like drowning in debt or has a financial has financial habits that are just cause for concern slash conflict within the relationship. Now. There are more results of this survey worth getting into. 43% of Gen Zers, for instance, view financial compatibility as more important than intellectual compatibility. And that's compared to 35% of millennials and 32% of Gen Xers. The number ticks up a little bit when it comes to baby boomers. 35% of baby boomers feel that financial compatibility is more important than intellectual compatibility. Yeah, so there's two parts to the story. One is why Gen Z feels that way and it's the economic pressure that the mainstream never recognizes. The other part of the story is, okay, but what's the right thing to do, right? So to me, I remember when I stopped being a lawyer and became a starving talk show host for a long, long time. I would go on dates and then you could tell who wasn't right for you based on the number of times they asked during the date. So are you thinking of going back into law? Okay, so I had one woman ask me three or four times. I was like, I got it. You're not interested, and I'm not interested in someone who's just looking for money. So for me, it's table stakes. So if someone is obsessed with money, that's just not the right person for me. And so I won't be able to stand it. Not only the fact that I didn't have it, right, but also that it's just an attitude I loathe. I won't be able to function with that person. So now, Having said that, the number one thing you should look for is intellectual compatibility. Thousand percent, because it's so important, guys. Because you have to talk to that person for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Like the physical changes, this happens, that happens. There's tons of beautiful women and 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 good-looking guys in the world. You know, I know a lot of people get obsessed with that, but I think that's the least important. But the intellectual one is definitely the most important because. Either you're in a relationship where you guys get along so well and you share life and you're having the time of your life. I know I'm exaggerating, but still a good, you know, that happens. And those people are super happy, generally speaking. Or you're in a relationship where you guys can't get along at all. Well, then you're guaranteed to be miserable. Yeah, look, going back to financial compatibility, it really depends on what financial compatibility is defined as, right? If Financial compatibility is simply, oh, I want a partner who makes a lot of money. Well, I mean, I think you might actually end up missing out on wonderful people, wonderful partners. Because to me, financial compatibility is more about habits, right? Am I dating someone and considering marriage with someone who has similar financial habits as me? And I'm specifically using myself as as the you know, the main you know determining factor because I know that I want to be responsible with my money. I want to make sure that we're building a nest egg, that we're not buying brand new lavish cars, you know, like it, that we're just being smart and planning ahead for our future. We're not blowing money on dumb things while also treating ourselves 
enjoying some of the money that we're making, right? And that's what I found in my partner. And he wasn't, believe me, he was not wealthy when we started dating. He's not wealthy now, we're not wealthy. But we have similar thoughts on how to spend money. And we help build each other up. And so don't like, don't like poo poo on the guy or the woman who's not like rolling in the dough. Because the whole point of entering a relationship and building a life together is just that you build a life together. It's more about the habits, it's more about the temperament, it's more about, you know, whether or not you guys really mesh well personality wise. And I do think that financial compatibility is part of that. So, did you want to jump in, Jake? Yeah, so last thing I, that I have on it is that, look, all of these compatibilities make a difference because you, sh- you gotta look for someone. So the whole idea of opposites attract, nah, don't try it. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea at all because what opposites do is fight all the time. Uh, and s- because they don't get along, they don't agree. They constantly don't agree, right? So if you marry a knucklehead who he's either spends money like a drunk sailor, it's gonna drive you crazy, right? Or thinks, oh, what's the big deal, man? I'm not gonna make, uh, I'm not gonna go work for a living, etc. You're gonna be miserable. It's gonna create endless conflict. Look for compatibility as much as you can in all of these categories. Mm-hmm. Including emotional compatibility, an area where 20% yep. of Gen Zers view financial compatibility as more important than emotional compatibility. Guys, emotional compatibility is super important as well. Because let me tell you what's actually the most expensive thing that could happen to you if you enter a relationship with someone based on the wrong factors. Divorce, <laughs> okay, divorce. It's lengthy, it's expensive, it's emotionally draining. So you gotta be compatible in more ways than one. And financial compatibility shouldn't be the end all be all in regard to you choosing a partner.